All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are determining the power consumed in a parallel circuit. So in this case, we've got a 48 volt source and we've got three resistors on different branches here, all in parallel. We've got five ohms, 10 ohms and 15 ohms. And we want to figure out what is the power consumed in each or by each resistor and the kind of the, the circuit uh, total as well. Um, so to get started with this, we're going to need to figure out the total resistance of the circuit. And that's just going to be using that formula of one over the total resistance is equal to the sum of all of um, the inverses of the individual resistances. Or we can just actually write this instead of doing one over, we'll just write them all as inverses. It means exactly the same thing. And if your calculator that you're using has an inverse function, it actually makes this operation pretty fast. Um, so what we need to do is we just need to isolate for RT. So we're just going to basically inverse both sides. So we can go ahead and fill this in with the numbers that we have. So it's going to be uh, 5 inverse plus 10 inverse plus 15 inverse. And we're going to take the inverse of that summation. Uh, so that's going to give us a value of uh, inside the brackets. It's going to be 0 0.3667. And that's got to be all inversed. And that's going to actually work out to the total resistance of the circuit being 2.727 ohms. Now it's interesting to note uh, with a parallel circuit that this equivalent resistance or the total resistance is actually going to always be smaller than any of the branches or it's going to be smaller than the smallest branch. So here our smallest resistance is 5 ohms. For sure this has to be less than 5 ohms every single time. So if you get a value here that's uh, bigger than your smallest resistance in a purely parallel circuit, that's a quick check to know that you've done something wrong or to know that you've done something right. If this number pops out as being smaller, there's a good chance that you've done it correctly. All right, so let's write out our power formulas now. The first one is P equals VI. The next one was P equals I squared R. And the third one is P equals V squared over R. These are good to memorize, um, but if you're just looking for the derivation as well, I made a video on that uh, and I'll put a link to it up in the top right corner where you can check it out. But what we want to do when we're finding the power uh, dissipation in a resistor, uh, we want to basically identify which of these two variables we have and roll with that. So in this case, when we look at this, we actually know the voltage drop across each one. It's going to be 48 volts because this is a parallel circuit. So the voltage drop will be the same as the source voltage across each one. And if you're not remembering why that is, um, let's come off the positive terminal here and just shade it in uh, as one color. So everything here that I've shaded red is electrically common. Like there's no voltage drop between any of these points on the red shaded thing. This is we're just assuming this is like a wire with, uh, you know, zero resistance. And if we do the same thing off the negative terminal of the battery and just continue over here, everything I've shaded here in blue is electrically common with the other blue stuff. So everything that's red is 48 volts higher voltage than anywhere that's blue. If you have highlighters and you're doing this on paper, it's not a bad idea to color code. Uh, otherwise, you, can, you don't need to color it, but you can just kind of trace the wire and see where it goes and realize that this is all basically one big chunk of metal. And it's going to be 48 volts higher than this side of the battery, which is also connected to all these other points. So it's going to be 48 volts across any of those. So knowing that um, we have the voltage drop across each resistor and we have the resistance that's given to us in the problem. So when we look down here at our formulas, we have voltage and we have resistance. So this is the formula that we're going to proceed with. We don't have the current flowing through each branch. So this, this doesn't help. And same here, we don't have the current. We could solve for it. Like we could now apply Ohm's law and then come back and do the voltage divider equation and all that, or sorry, current divider. But right now we have voltage and resistance. So let's stop there and proceed into the power calculations. So as mentioned, uh, V1 is going to be equal to V2, which is going to be equal to V3, which is equal to our source voltage, which is 48 volts. So we can go ahead and calculate the power dissipation at resistor one uh, using this formula here. So P1 is going to be equal to V1 squared over R1. And when we plug this in, it's going to be 48 volts squared over 5 ohms. And when you crunch that in your calculator, we're going to get 460.8 watts. So we can do the same thing for the next resistor, P2. It's going to be equal to V2 squared over R2. And uh, voltage again, V2 is going to be 48 volts squared over R2, which is 10 ohms. 
and this works out to be 230 watts. All right, so P3, same thing. We're just gonna apply the same formula over and over again. Uh, once you figure out which formula that you need to use, it's quite easy. So we're gonna do V3 squared over R3, and again, 48 volts squared over the resistance now, which is 15 ohms, and uh, that works out to be 153.6 watts. So the next thing we want to do now that we have each of the individual power consumptions is we just want to add them all together. So actually, whether it's in uh, series or parallel, the total power consumed in the circuit is just going to be the sum of all of the individual powers. So it's going to be P1 plus P2 plus P3. And uh, just adding them up, 460 plus 153 plus 230, we get a total power consumption of 844.4 watts. Now, the total power consumed by the circuit is going to equal the total power supplied. So it's also a really good check to check the power supply. Now, we know that we're supplying 48 volts, and we know that we have a total resistance of 2.72 ohms for the entire circuit. So we could basically replace all these three parallel resistors with a single resistor uh, that just has 2.727 ohms. Now, we have resistance and we have voltage. So again, we're going to use the same power formula here. PT uh, for the power supply. So it's going to be VT. You can also write this as a capital E for the source of electromotive force if you want, um, or just write the total um, voltage supplied, uh, and then divide this by the total resistance. So when we check this for the whole circuit, it's going to be 48 volts squared over the equivalent resistance, so the total resistance, which is 2.727 ohms, and uh, that actually works out also to 844.8 watts, and that eight is just a difference in rounding somewhere in the problem, um, but basically we get 844 watts. So this checks out and it looks like we've done it correctly. So note, if you did watch the previous video where we determined the power consumption in a series circuit, we had a 48 volt source and we also had um, a five, a 10, and a 15 ohm resistor, but all in series. I'll put a link up here in the top right corner to that video, but basically when we have them in parallel, actually the power consumption in each resistor goes up quite a lot higher than if they were in series. And the total power consumption of the entire circuit, or the power we need to provide, is higher when these same resistors are in parallel compared to when they're in series. So that's just good to be aware of and, um, and something to pay attention to. And just note that if you're actually using a real resistor in real life, um, they will have power ratings of you know what they're actually what they can tolerate and operate under so that's something to watch out for uh, if you're working in a lab or something like that all right um that's all i got for now join me in the next video and we're going to determine the power consumed in a series parallel circuit